Now, attitude's not that easy to fix. It's not that easy to get information. It's hard to look up attitude in the yellow pages. If you could put your car in the shop and go next door and get your attitude tuned, wouldn't that be nice, right? But where do you go? How do we engage in the kind of philosophical thinking that will refine our attitude to give us a chance for future fortune rather than what will be missing in the future? So this is big attitude. Here's another attitude. No matter what they pay, I always come early and I always stay late to invest in my own future. We call that another attitude about the same job. Now, why would one person have one attitude and another person have another attitude? We call that mysteries of the mind. I don't know. Everybody has to choose for themselves. Everybody has to decide by education. Now, if you didn't know what the consequences were going to be, it could be very easy to choose the wrong attitude and not discipline yourself to the right attitude. So a big portion of our life is affected by how we feel. Let me give you just a quick list about the feelings that affect our lives. Number one, it's how you feel about the past. Boy, it's easy to carry the past as a burden instead of as a school. It's easy to let the past overwhelm you instead of let the past instruct you. How to feel about the past hurts and the past losses and the past difficulties and the times you failed and the times that didn't work, the accumulation of all of that. How you feel about that is going to greatly affect your future in your life. One of the major things that affects your life is how you feel about the future. Our life is affected by two major things. One is price and the other is promise. And it's not that easy to pay the price if you can't see the promise. I think kids are having problems these days trying to pay the price because they can't see the promise. But all of us wouldn't mind paying the price if we could have a clear view of tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. If we had the high assurance with great probability of how it's going to work out, do you think we would hesitate to pay? The answer is no. But everybody hesitates to pay if the future isn't clear. So to help the kids these days, we got to do two things. Help them to see the promise and help them pay the price. But we can pay if we can see. My karate instructor said, Mr. Rohn, you cannot believe the incredible feeling of walking down any city street unafraid. I said, let's get on with the classes, right? <laughs> hey, I will sweat. I will put myself through the paces, right? What would we do for an extraordinary promise? Answer, the most unbelievable things. Would you crack the books? Would you burn the midnight oil? Would you engage in the extra thoughts and the extra disciplines if the promise was adequate? And the answer is, of course. But who wants to read? Who wants to burn the midnight oil? Who wants to put themselves through the paces if the promise isn't clear? Important, price and promise. Here's number three. It's how you feel about each other. It's so important. Attitude about society, country, state, city, community, family, enterprise, office, company, corporation, division. It's so important to have a unique understanding about other human beings and what makes a good life, what constitutes a good life. How you feel about each other. I've got a good phrase for you. You can't succeed by yourself. So to have a unique, refined sense of appreciation for each other is prerequisite. It takes each other to build a society. It takes all of us to build a country, to build a nation. It takes all of us to build a community. Key phrase, you can't succeed by yourself. I gave a speech not long ago to the Rotary Club of Culver City, California, and I was unusually affected by the Pledge of Allegiance that day. Big, strong voices. It's a big, strong club. And it was going through my mind the next few days, the Pledge of Allegiance. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, what an important key document, Pledge of Allegiance. And so I started writing and I wrote a discourse on the Pledge of Allegiance. I took each key word and did a little summary for our Tape of the Month Club. Wow, the Pledge of Allegiance is unique. It starts with I and ends with all. The Pledge starts with I and ends with all. It takes all of us to make any one of us successful. And a unique refined appreciation of the all of us is what makes the I of us do much better. That appreciation of society. It takes all of us to make a market. We need each other's ideas and inspiration. 
And once you have that sense of appreciation of the all of us, now you and your place and your possibilities and your opportunities now start to really soar when you understand how important it is within the framework of the all of us. So you can't succeed by yourself. It's hard to find a rich hermit. Everybody has to choose for themselves. Everybody has to decide by education. Now, if you didn't know what the consequences were going to be, it could be very easy to choose the wrong attitude and not discipline yourself to the right attitude. You cannot escape the accumulated effect of the selection of your attitude. You can't escape it. So one of the major things to check is, how do I feel? And am I on track or off track with my attitude? How do we engage in the kind of philosophical thinking that will refine our attitude to give us a chance for future fortune rather than what will be missing in the future? It's not what happens that determines the major part of your future. It's not what happens. What happens happens to us all. The key is what you do about it. It's not what happens, it's what you do about it. And he said, if you will start that process of change, do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. Then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take, blaming yourself instead of the marketplace, taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission and this one was a little tough for me. He said, Mr. Owen, you've got pennies in your pocket. You've got nothing in the bank. Creditors are calling. You're behind on your promises. He says, here's how that occurs. You've attracted, up until now, you've attracted the things to you because of the person you've become. Now I said, well, how can I change all that? He said, very simple. If you will change, everything will change for you. You don't have to change what's outside. All you've got to change is what's inside. To have more, you simply have to become more. And then he said, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Start working on yourself, making these personal changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. It's never that pleasant to talk about the negative, but we got to talk about it because life is part negative. These attitude diseases are like weeds that grow in the garden. It's a normal part of life. Here's a good phrase to note. Negative is normal. It's not successful, but it's normal. It's part of life. And here's the next key, in my opinion. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it, handle it. Now, I know some people teach the other way. And listen to them, and listen to me, and then make up your own mind, right? Don't be a follower, be a student. But I say you got to handle the negative. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it, but you do have to handle it, my opinion. I know some people teach, just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your guard. So you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called The Great War Between Good and Evil. Mr. Reynolds and I are working on a new book this year called The Great War Between Good and Evil. And there is a war on. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. If democracy sleeps, guess who never sleeps? Tyranny. In the absence of light, guess what's automatic? Darkness. If good does not arouse itself and become active, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war. A mental war, a physical war, a financial war, between enterprise and ease, between accomplishment and failure. It's a war. That's why there's an Old Testament phrase that gives the best advice for human activity when it says, six days labor, one day rest. Now, I'm sure we've taken that to mean don't work all seven days. 
take one off. Here's what it also means. Only take one off. Or you're liable to lose the war. Now, we've got it down to five and two. And maybe that's not too dangerous. I don't know. If God would have thought of five and two, he might have made it five and two. I don't know. You can't think of everything. But here's what it does mean. Enterprise is better than ease. If you rest too long, the jungle overtakes the village. Now, here's the good news about the war between good and evil. Evil is no match for good, but good must be active. Weeds are no match for human activity, but if you stand still, how far in will they come? All the way. They'll grow right up around your shoes. But if you get busy, how far back can you take them? As far as you wish. They're no match, but you must be active. That's why the six and one. Make sure you're not losing the war by taking off too much. I want you to ponder these four questions. Here's the first one, and that's why. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn? Share as much as you can share? Develop every skill you possibly can. See every human you possibly can. Go to every class you possibly can. Touch everybody you possibly can. Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. Work on your list of whys. One of the big thrusts for success is to come up with a strong enough why. In leadership training, here's what we learned. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision, we die. Without a vision, we perish. Without a dream, we're nothing. From the movie, The Professionals, from the movie, The Professionals, it said, we joined because we believed. We stayed because we were committed. We left because we were disillusioned, but we came back because we were lost. Without a dream, we are nothing. I'm asking you to sit down with your family and develop a dream strategy. I'm asking you to make a list of what, what you want. What kind of health do you want? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of income do you want? What kind of gifts do you wish to bestow? What kind of power would you like to have? What kind of influence would you like to have? I'm asking you to go home and work on the why. I'm asking you to have a vision. Now here's number two. Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question. Why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? I want you to establish some of your goals. I want you to give thoughtful consideration to your goals. And why not? If a farm boy can wander out of Idaho and finally arrive at this extravaganza, why not you? If we've got good health for many, why not the rest? If it's happened for you, why not others? And why not you? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you going to do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now, here's number three. Why not you? I wish I could say that to each of you individually, but it would take a couple of lifetimes to sit down and talk with each of you individually. But I would rather do that. I'd rather sit down and talk with you and your family with the fire burning in the living room than to be standing on this platform. That's my true desire. 
I'd love to talk to you and your children face to face. That's what I'd really like to do. I'd love to spend a couple of days with each of you personally and pour out my heart, my soul, what's going on in my head, what's going on with me. See if we couldn't connect and find something valuable. But time doesn't permit for us to have those intimate conversations and get to know each other that well. So I've got to do it from up here. But I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains. You can make decisions. You can study the plan. You can change your life. You can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? And I'm here to say that I'm ready to pledge my support to make your personal dreams come true. I ask the question, why not you? But I'm not going to ask it and just walk away. I'm going to ask it and walk with you. And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? There never was a better time. And what a time now for us to take this dream and not let it die. Take this dream and give it life. Take this dream and breathe into it your own personal spirit until finally it becomes a flame that burns around the whole world. Let's go do it now.